Praise the Lord. Mwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord Church. Um, you asked us to give a, a testimony. The Bible says they overcame through their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So my name is Lucy Wanjiro Kiepa. I'm a mother of three and I can see them here. Wave. Thank you. Those are my children and I want to thank God for them. Um, I want to thank God this morning for the gift of life and for keeping us well. I also want to thank God because last week we completed 34 years since we got married. Sit up, give me my coffee. Um, because that is one thing I heard you people fear is marriage. It is possible, and I pray for the ones who are getting married, that God will keep them and sustain them so that they celebrate even 50 to 60 years together. Uh, this morning, I want to thank uh, uh, God for giving me an opportunity to share the word of God here with you and even thank our vicar for giving me the opportunity even to minister to the youth. The diocesan theme for, for this uh, month, the diocesan theme for this month is taken from Romans 12 verse 1 to 22. It, it talks about overcoming evil by doing good. Overcoming evil by doing good. So basically, that is the theme for this uh, year, and we can read it for ourselves, and that is what God is calling us to. The book of James, we've just uh, read the book of James. I don't know whether you all were in, I can see most of you were not in, the book of James. James was a brother to Jesus. He was one of the apostles. And he wrote, um, he wrote this, um, the book of James, to the Christians or to the people in Jerusalem. The, the rest of the Christians had been scattered to all parts of the world, different places, because of the persecution that was happening, because of their belief in Christ. So just, uh, James wrote um, the, the book of James, which is written under his own name, and he wanted to teach on how faith and work, faith and work relate to one another. He, his book is a practical way after you've heard all the things that you have heard about Moses, about Abraham, about all the prophets. Remember, it is action, action, action. Your faith needs to be joined in with action. That is what James was trying to bring out to the Christians, a practical way of living your Christian life, a very practical way. How to deal with trials and your temptations, which is something that every youth and every person goes through trials and temptations, how to deal with that, how to speak with power, how to ask for wisdom, how, wisdom, you know there's a lot of wisdom in the world today, a lot of wisdom, and not, the wisdom that is not of God can cause a lot of damage. People have created atomic bombs, not through, the, not through using the wisdom God has given them, because God cannot let you uh, create something that is, will destroy uh, many people. But the wisdom that comes from God is what James is talking about. And also the relationship between the rich and the poor. Isn't that the great divide? Even now we are discussing it. Going to the university, you need to be put in classes. Poor, rich. Until if your father is rich, you get less. So. James is talking, how do we deal with the rich and the poor? And James' uh, greatest idea was how you should live out your Christian faith in action. You know, it's not enough to say I'm born again. It's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to come and sit here and listen to the word of God. It's what you receive, you receive the word of God, then you go and put it into action. In fact, in another place he says, do not just be hearers. 
you hear the word of God, you hear the word of God, you hear the word of God, but you do not do what the Bible says. So be a doer of the word. Trust and obey. Those are some of the, the, the statements that are in James. If you read from chapter 1, I think there are just five chapters. You can read it on your own and see how it is. Practice what you teach, what you hear. Do not be double-minded all the time. You're not sure. Don't be double-minded. Be very sure of what God is telling you. Because when you're unstable, you cannot achieve much. So, and a blessed man, blessed is a person who endures temptations. See, we are all tested. We are all tried. But blessed is a person who perseveres. Now, you know on your own you cannot make it. Who want to you if you you want to do it on your own. How much we need to come to Christ, ask him to forgive us of our sins, ask him to be our Lord and Savior. I hope you have done that, so that you can be able to stand the trials that are there today. Trials are many, temptations are many, there are very many decisions you have to make and you don't even know sometimes what to do, but with God, you're able to overcome and become victorious. I had the song Double Double. When I think of Double Double, I think of someone like Job. You know what Job went through? He went through a lot of trials, he lost everything, but in the end he got a Double Double. So it is not enough to sing Double Double for yourself and you're not making an effort. So make an effort to be enjoined with Christ so that he can fight on your, your battles for you and you can be able to achieve the Double Double O. So, what does James 2.10 teach us? So, do not have partiality. That's where James starts. He starts by saying, when a poor man walks in, and you look at him, with his clothes not up, up to it, he's not well dressed, and you tell him, you sit on the floor. Maybe he's come for a wedding. You know, sometimes they appear from nowhere, poor people. Sometimes they've had there's a wedding somewhere, and of course they've come to eat. And you look at him and you tell him, you sit down. Then you see another man come in with a golden chain, with golden bracelets, looking, he has just been dropped off in his big car. And you tell him, you come sit here in front. You know, that's the, the wisdom of the world, isn't it? People who are well-dressed, people who have big cars, who are rich, they are given front seats. But that's, James is telling us, when you do that, classifying the people, you're already doing something very, very wrong. And God is calling us not to classify the people like that. Look at the poor man and help him. He has no clothes, give him clothes. He has no food give him something to eat, that is true religion. That is what Christ is, Christianity is all about. So when we classify our people like that, we lack in our love for our neighbor, and we need to love all people. That is what God is calling us for. Is there someone among you, is there someone in Sunday school that you see coming in without, without something nice to wear, yet your wardrobe is very full? Go into your wardrobe and check something that you can give out. Is there someone in your college whom you know is suffering and not having um, enough? Your eyes, God is asking us to be more compassionate, to be thinking of others, to love others. Then faith without works is dead. Your brother or your sister is naked. You tell them, go in peace. Someone is hungry, you tell them, uh, go in peace. Maybe someone, someone is, is, you can tell someone who is hungry. So God is calling us to do good, to give them, to clothe them, to feed them. That is true religion. So let our eyes be open to the needs of the people around us, to those who are close and those whom we share common spaces. Let us be, be, be keen to be able to help them. So Abraham is considered a man of faith. You remember Abraham, the man of faith. In fact, he's our father, the father of faith. 
Abraham was asked by God, take your son, your only son, your begotten, I mean, he was a precious son, someone who had been waited for very many years. And he was told, go and uh, sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. And Abraham did not hesitate. He took his son, took him, and we know the story goes, he even went to the point of lifting the dagger, you know, to kill the boy on the altar. And then that's when the, the angel, and uh, he was shown a ram that was nearby. And because of that, God, God considers him um, a friend. God considers him uh, a, very, a very close person to him. That is what God is calling us to, that we can be able to, hear, see, uh, to do the work of God. We can be able to hear God and be able to do what God is asking us to do. Is God asking you to help your neighbor? Is God asking you to change your life so that you can do good? Do good to others, do good, especially to the people within, within the church. Do good to them. They are your brothers and sisters. Do good to them. So the other one is even Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. Rahab was, uh, during the time of Joshua, she's the one who saw the spies who came to spy Jericho. And she did not even know about their God. She had just heard about him that he was a mighty God, he had delivered them from Egypt. And she, she was able to spare, to, to spare the spies, to let them into her home so that they may be able to, to, to be protected from the, being killed by the king of Jericho. And because of that, her works and faith combined saved Israel. And because of that, she was justified. So sometimes in our mercy, we receive justification because we are merciful. Let us be merciful to one another by, seeking, by opening our eyes and not closing our eyes, even our own relatives. We have relatives who are going through crisis, through difficult things. Let us not close our eyes. Let us be people who are able to help one another. So the body, the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works, James says, is dead. So you cannot say, I have faith, and there's nothing you do. Look for a position to be able to serve. Look for a position to be able to serve even within here, that you may serve one another. Even collecting books is service. Singing here is a service. Let us offer good service. So the other thing that James talks about is that this is the true religion, to visit orphans and widows in trouble. Those are people who are vulnerable. In other words, people who are vulnerable, are they within you and you have not done anything? Is there someone who probably children slept hungry and you know you people can have something extra? Please share. So do good to each other, support, encourage one another. Is there someone destitute among you? Come together and help him. There's a way even as youth, you can come together. Maybe somebody doesn't have school fees. If all of you give 100, 200, 300, you may find that you've helped someone who is about to drop out of school. So those are the things. That, that, that's what is, the, James is saying is true religion. You have clothes to share do it and share in love. And of course when you share, you don't say that is the dress I give them. You give and, and forget. James also tells us to ask God for wisdom and how I long for young people to be wise. God is calling us to be wise. The children of this world, people who are of this world are wise. They have a wisdom of their own. See, they are able to overdo things, do better than we do. They can do things better than most of us. But God is calling us because he's the author of wisdom. Ask him. That is one thing God asks us to ask. Ask for wisdom. You know Solomon? Solomon, the son of David, the king, he asked for wisdom. And not only did he get wisdom, he also got wealth and riches and, uh, and protection from enemies. So ask for wisdom, godly wisdom. Wisdom that helps you to make decisions 
wisdom that helps you to know what to do, how to do, whom to be with, how to choose your friends, that is the wisdom God is asking us for. And most of all, to know the times. These times that we are in, you must be wise enough to know the times. Most people may think it is just another day. It is not just another day. We are getting closer and closer to the coming of Christ, aren't we? Every day we are getting closer and closer to the times of the return of Jesus Christ. So God is asking us to stay in wisdom. The revival is coming into the church and you are the people to carry revival. That people may be revived, that we may not be just kawaida. We may stand in power and authority that God has given us and God is waiting upon you. So ask for wisdom that God may use you to change your world, to change your school, your workplace, wherever you are, you may become the agent of change. So seek good, seek a discerning heart that you may live wisely, doing good and overcoming evil. So let us, let us, like Solomon, always want to be wise. Can it be your prayer every morning that you ask God, because it's free, it's a free gift. God says, I will give abundantly. He will give you wisdom. So let us ask him for wisdom so that we may be able to shun evil. And most of all, let us know that if you have not known the Lord as your Savior, if you have not come to Christ who was crucified for you, he went to the cross, he died, he shed his blood, he died and he was buried, he rose again for our sake. If you have not known him as Lord and Savior, please let us know him as Lord and Savior so that we may be able to overcome and shun evil. So we can be able to, lead, to love one another and to add faith onto good works. Let us, our works, show how much we have known God. Remember to share the word of God with others. Do not keep it to yourself. When was the last time you told anyone about Christ? So tell, sub, tell someone else about Jesus. May you be the only someone that someone else will read. Sometimes some people do not know, but they know this child, this, this young man is different. This man is not like other men. Or this girl is totally different. Why is she so different? And they wonder. So you may be the only person that others may read or see. So may we, only, may we be that kind of person, may we be the Bible that uh, others may read even without opening because your life, the way you do things, the way you think, the way you share, the way you talk will be a representation of what Christ is and his influence over your life. And if there's anyone who would like to give their life to Jesus, anyone who would like to surrender their life to Jesus, we are here and the evangelist is here. We can all, somebody can raise their hand and we pray and you receive Christ. It's as simple as that. So anybody who has not received Christ, we're giving you a minute or two, you can raise your hand and the evangelist will pray and we can start on a new, a new level. So anybody who wants to give their life to Jesus, to combine their, their faith with action, not to stand on the wall, not to be on the periphery, but to give your life to Jesus. So let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have taught us through the word that our faith needs to be combined with action and with works. We thank you, Father, because you're going to work in our hearts and to keep us well so that we may continue to do good and to do good especially to the people of the faith. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.